गुड मॉर्निंग एवरी वन वेलकम बैक टू जी के टूडे आई होप यू ऑल आर डूइंग वेरी वेल एंड टूडे विल बी डिस्कसिंग द मोस्ट इम्पॉर्टेंट एम सी क्यूज फॉर सेकेंड ऑफ अप्रिल ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी फोर ऑल्सो लेट मी टेल यू दैट दीज क्वेश्चन आर पार्ट ऑफ आवर डेली ट्वेंटी एम सी क्यूज सीरीज सो यू कैन सब्सक्राइब टू इट इफ यू वॉन्ट टू लेट स्टार्ट विद आवर सेशन द फर्स्ट क्वेश्चन इज रिसेंटली विच कंट्री होस्टेड the g20 second employment working group meeting so the second employment working group meeting is led by brazil and it is convened in brasilia with india's participation so our secretary of labor and employment who is it miss sumita davra she co-chairs alongside brazil and south africa and the focus includes quality employment just transition amidst digital transformation technology's role in enhancing the life quality etc also the one of the focus was gender equality in workplaces so the indian delegation emphasized inclusivity advocating for equal representation and empowerment irrespective of demographics fine so brazil has hosted the g20 second employment working group meeting now can you tell me where was the first Nuclear Energy Summit held. So answer would be Brussels in Belgium. Okay. So leaders from 34 countries convened in Brussels for the Nuclear Energy Summit, and it was organized by International Atomic Energy Agency and Belgium. Basic aim is to explore the strategies for leveraging the nuclear power in achieving the net zero emissions and sustainable development goals. So following the COP 28 where over 20 countries pledged to increase the nuclear energy use the summit emphasized the some practical steps for deployment and financing and the technical panels dealt into maximizing the nuclear energy's potential fine so what was the venue for the first nuclear energy summit answer would be brussels next question is Recently who has been appointed as the director general of the National Investigation Agency So central government has recently appointed new director generals for key agencies and here answer is Sadanand Vasant Date he is a 1990 batch IPS officer from Maharashtra state he now heads the National Investigation Agency also Mr Rajiv Kumar Sharma who is also from the 1990 batch but from rajasthan cadre will oversee the bureau of police research and development fine so now the new director general of national investigation agency is sadanand vasant next question is basiro dmi5 recently seen in the news became the new president of which country so recently he became the youngest president of the country senegal and he has defeated rival amado so he was to transform senegal's political scene focusing on democratic reforms reducing the executive authorities and fighting the corruption also his agenda includes renegotiating international deals and possibly introducing a new currency and uh, his win marks a significant shift in senegalese politics which signals a new era of change and promise right so now the new president of senegal country is basiro diomay fay next is Who won the women singles title at the WTT Feeder Birat 2 2024 in Birat, Lebanon? Here answer is Shreeja Akula. She ranked 47th globally, and she won the women singles title at WTT Feeder Birat 2024 in Lebanon by defeating Sara D. Nute, who is from Luxembourg, in a thrilling finals. So she aged just 25 years. and uh, she secured the victory after coming from behind also she had beaten the top seed su huyo one of south korea earlier in the tournament this marks her second wtt singles career title okay so who has won the women singles title at this event answer is shrija akula solar and heliospheric observatory that is soho recently seen in the news is a project of international collaboration between which two agencies Here, correct answer would be European Space Agency and NASA. So, a citizen scientist recently discovered the 5,000th comet using the SOHO 
which is a collaboration between European Space Agency and NASA. It was launched in the year 1995 to study the Sun from the first Lagrangian point. So it is equipped with 12 scientific instruments and continuously it observes the solar atmosphere. Also, despite its mission ending in 1998, SOHO persists and it provides invaluable insights into the Sun's dynamics and discovered numerous comets, making it the longest lasting Sun watching satellite. Fine. So SOHO is a joint collaboration of European Space Agency and NASA. Okay. Next is recently which ministry notified new wage rates for unskilled manual workers under the MG Narega 2005 for financial year 2024 to 2025. So Ministry of Rural Development has announced the new wage rates for unskilled manual workers under Mahatma Gandhi National Rural Employment Guarantee Act for financial year 2024 to 2025 in which it guarantees 100 days of wage employment annually to rural adult household members. So Ministry of Rural Development adjust the state wise wage rates yearly based on CPI AL changes as man mandated by MG Narega's section 6. So this ensures fair compensation for the rural laborers supporting livelihoods in alignment with inflation rates. Fine. So here correct answer is A option that is Ministry of Rural Development. Now apart from it the Telecom Regulatory Authority of India has issued some recommendations on the usage of embedded SIM for machine to machine communication which involves automated interactions between the devices over networks and it excludes the human intervention. So in this embedded sensors and communication modules facilitate the data exchange between the devices via wired and wireless networks and applications ranges from robotics in factories to the smart grids and the home appliances. So it enhances the efficiency in the sectors like manufacturing, transportation and utilities. You can be asked at which organization recently released recommendations on usage of embedded SIM for machine to machine communication. Here answer would be Telecom Regulatory Authority of India that is TRAI. Recently which two organizations are providing irrigation as a service in selected parts of the country. So here correct answer is Agri Rain and Urja. So they offer irrigation as a service in a specific region and it is a hassle free cost effective irrigation technology for the small farmers and it operates on a subscription or pay per use basis. Okay. So benefits include enhanced water efficiency, increased crop yield and soil health monitoring. Particularly it is advantageous for the water intensive crops like sugarcane and this service improves agricultural practices while ensuring the fair access to the irrigation resources. Fine. So here correct answer is Agri Rain and Urja. They are providing irrigation as a service in selected parts of the country. According to the Brand Finance 2024 report, which is the world's strongest insurance brand. So in the 2024 Brand Finance Insurance 100 report, Life Insurance Corporation of India, that is LIC, maintains its global dominance and it solidifies its position as the strongest insurance brand with a stable brand value of 816 billion rupees. Okay. Meanwhile, Chinese insurers like Ping and China Life Insurance and CPIC assert their dominance with Ping in leading the pack with a significant increase in brand value to 2799 billion rupees which showcases China's influence on the international insurance landscape, right? So the world's strongest insurance brand is LIC of India. Food Waste Index Report 2024, recently seen in the news, is released by which organization? It is released by United Nations Environment Program and recently they have released their third Food Waste Index Report, revealing that in 2022, 1.05 billion metric tons of food, 19% of the global supply were totally wasted. And this waste contrasts starkly with 783 million people experiencing hunger worldwide. So the report emphasizes the need to tackle food waste so as to achieve sustainable development goal 12.3. Households are the largest contributors because they are responsible for 60% of the wastage and annual per capita food wastage is estimated at 79 kgs. Fine. 
So the food waste index report is released by United Nations Environment Program headquarters lies in Nairobi, Kenya. Recently the government of India is establishing new atomic clocks at which places? So Indian government is deploying atomic clocks nationwide so as to ensure all devices align with the Indian standard time and uh, it counters reliance on the US based servers. It is developed by only four countries and atomic clocks were invented in the year 1955. Okay, So new clocks are being installed in Bhubaneswar, Jaipur and Hyderabad and then it would be expanding from Faridabad and Ahmedabad. So by the month of June, synchronization with NPL time will be mandatory for all Indian device manufacturers. Fine. So government of India is establishing the new atomic clocks at three places, Bhubaneswar, Jaipur and Hyderabad. Next is, recently who was inducted into the World Billiards Museum's Hall of Fame in Shangrao, China. So in March 2024, Pankaj Adwani, who is an Indian billiards player, was inducted into the World Billiard Museum's Hall of Fame in Shangrao, in China. And he was inducted after winning the 26th IBSF title in China. And the museum covers 13,000 500 square meters and it offers an overview of snooker's history, equipment, events, cultural traditions and the people. So the museum promotes international sports excellence and the cultural preservation. Fine. So Pankaj Adwani has been inducted into the World Billiards Museum's Hall of Fame in the country China. Now the last question is, recently which country poised to become the first Southeast Asia country to allow the same sex marriage? This is the country Thailand. And the Thailand's lower house of parliament has approved a marriage equality, equality bill which signals a step towards legalizing the same-sex marriage in Southeast Asia and it is supported by 400 out of 415 lawmakers and now it awaits approval from the upper house. If passed, Thailand would be the third Asian nation to legalize the gay marriage and this historic decision marks a significant milestone in the region's LGBTQ plus rights movement. Fine. So Thailand is said to become the first Southeast Asian country that would allow the same sex marriage. So these are the most important current affairs and the news from today. And now let's start with today's quiz. Here on the slide, you can see five questions which have been taken from the past two, three days current affairs. Pause the video and try to solve each of these questions. And at the end of the lecture, do not forget to share your scores in the comment section. So please be honest and do not cheat with yourself. So that's it for today. I hope you have liked the session. These were the important news and events from today. And we will meet again tomorrow with some more important current affairs. Till then, stay tuned. Thank you so much for watching. And please do not forget to subscribe to GK Today. With this, Meenu Sana signing off.